90 degrees and really above about 60 degrees the scapula needs to follow the humerus and this one won't it will to there and then it stops so if this lovely soul tries to bring his arm up higher he's gonna squish whatever's in here so what why why do we say bring your shoulders down your back doesn't someone want to ask me that? Why does that get said? Why does that get said? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I do think one of the reasons, but I have a theory. I think that one of the reasons that pull your shoulders down your back gets said is um, because we have all this kind of tension here. And uh, so if my shoulders are here, tightness, neck muscles, neck muscles, some of these neck muscles do also pull my shoulders up. So in theory, if those muscles were relaxed, then my shoulders would not be pulled up. However, if these muscles are tight and pulling up, and it's a little thing that happens to muscles, if they're pulling up and then I pull on the other side and I pull down, what then happens, what then might happen, is that then they're just both pulling. And these have more to pull on, because now there's something pulling down. So pulling your shoulders down does not necessarily make these muscles relax, is one thing. It might be a nice idea, but pulling your shoulders down, if this is pulling up, is only going to create pulling in both directions. Now you could say, release your shoulders down, which would be better in my book, closer to being a doable, uh, non-tension creating exercise. But also then as we bring our arms up, if we bring the arm up overhead and we come up like this, this is often uncomfortable to bring the shoulder up, the arm up like this. Um, but if we but that's also not actually having the glenoid fossa follow the head of the humerus. This is some other pull the shoulder up kind of thing, which might be something I do as a compensation because I can't sort out what's going on in my shoulder. I might do it for a lot of reasons. Um, if, however, I let the glenoid fossa keep following my arm, then I don't necessarily have any excess tension accumulated here. And I can even, I can bring my arm up, up, up. So it's also that question of like, I can bring my <coughs> arm overhead and turn my head. Can I do that? Yeah, I can do that. Is that pathway clear? Is it? So, um, so bringing the, letting the shoulders rotate upward, the scapula upwardly rotate and elevate does not necessarily mean you're going to have tension in your neck. If it, you do have tension in your neck, it's not that the action is wrong, it's how we're doing, it's doing it, it's what we're using to do it, right, that's not helpful. But the letting the scapula rotate upward is not in and of itself a terrible thing to do. And in fact, pulling the scapula downward particularly if we're going to weight bear in the arm, is going to make it harder to keep the uh, congruence, to keep the joint surfaces in contact with each other. Right. So as I take my arm up overhead, <laughs> either I dislocate the arm, or I start working a whole lot in there, or I can let the scapula follow it as it comes up overhead. And if if I am going to weight bear in that arm, then I want the clearest possible connection between the glenoid fossa and the head of the humerus, rather than this. If I'm going to do something like downward dog, say. Right? Does that make sense? <laughs>